Okay, everybody, uh, welcome. This is uh, Data Pioneer with the Linux Unix Tech Channel. And um, yesterday I did a video on setting up NextCloud, personal cloud, on Ubuntu 18.04 LTS, uh, running as a virtual machine, although you don't have to do it that way, but I was running it as a virtual machine using 4 gigs of RAM and 100 gigabyte VDI hard drive, virtual hard drive. Um, I thought I'd do a little more extensive review of the application itself today. Uh, I didn't really get into the application that much. I just, that video, the first one was uh, basically how to set it up on your system. The only thing I didn't do but is included in the uh, link at the, below the video from yesterday. So if you haven't seen that video, go ahead and check it out. It's setting up NextCloud, uh, NextCloud Personal Cloud on Ubuntu 18.04 LTS. Um, the only thing I didn't include is I did not include the SSL portion, and I'm not going to do that today either. But I do want to get into the application and take a look at it a little more in depth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and open up the browser. I'm in my Ubuntu 18.04 3 platform right now in VirtualBox. And um, I want to go ahead and go to the uh, fully qualified domain name nc.lan local it's already there I'm going to go ahead and pull it up uh, that should bring up the uh, screen it does for the uh, login I'm going to go ahead and put in the administrative account that I set up in yesterday's video which is data pioneer and uh, I think if I click on that it's going to yeah it's going to have put the password in for me although I know what it is I'm going to go ahead and hit that login button and log in Okay, so from yesterday, you'll notice I've changed the theming here a little bit. I've got a dark theme. I'm, I'm a dark theme person. I'm, I'm not really into heavy light themes. So um, this is uh, the next cloud, personal cloud. And I've already checked this out, by the way, between uh, my laptop uh, to see if I could uh, get into, um, into this and share files across the LAN. And uh, I w was able to do that, uh, so it works. And um, let me go ahead and just to show you around. Uh, this is the all files, and this is all I have up here right now. And uh, I've got uh, a documents folder that's being shared right now, and that's what that share link is. It's being shared out with my laptop. I've got a photos uh, folder. It's got various photos, and if I click on one of these, it brings up the the photo that's there. Now this is being hosted, you know, it's a, a personal cloud out in the cloud on my LAN, um, which is uh, a part of the 100 uh, gigabyte uh, virtual drive. And so this is where they're being stored. They're not being stored locally in the Ubuntu platform itself. This is out on the VDI, uh, which is actually being hosted uh, on F drive, okay? Uh, there's my photo. Here's a photo of the hummingbird. Uh, here's one of the NextCloud community. It's a pretty good sized community there. Um, I don't know where the headquarters is for NextCloud. Uh, and you got a squirrel there. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and close that. Um, so this is the photos, and I you know I can put a lot more in there, obviously, and uh, upload them. Uh, if you do the plus sign, you can do an upload file. You can do a new folder. You can actually create another folder under here if you want, or a new text document. You know, if I click on that, uh, and uh, I can call it uh, sample.md, for instance, markdown language. And, uh, and so let me see if I can go ahead and uh, this is a sample document. Okay. And um, let's see if I know how to save it. Um, I'm not sure I know how to save this file. Um, huh. Well, uh, version sharing comments, activities. Oh, I'm, this is new to me too, guys. I'm, I'm sorry. I really haven't gotten into saving these files yet. Um, and uh, I don't see how to do that, so I'm just going to bypass that. But I've got the file open, and it's just a matter of figuring out how to save it. Uh, so you can save it there, but that's really not what I wanted to show you. What you can do is you can you can upload files from uh, other areas and bring them in here. Um, and so let's let's do a plus and do an upload file. 
And uh, this is obviously out on the uh, Ubuntu 18.04.3. Um, I don't have my laptop hooked up to show you that particular thing. But, for instance, on the pictures, I, I took this file. Uh, I think it's the only one I have on the, on the system. And I just hit open here, so it's under the pictures, and click open. And that brings it in. It, in fact, it's prompting me now as a file conflict. It says that a file I want to upload um, is the same file, it believes anyway, um, that is already there, and it is. So I'm going to go ahead and cancel it. Okay, so let's go over. Uh, you've got a search functionality here where you can search for things. Like if I want to search for Dan Calloway, I can search for that. It pulls up that name. Uh, so it finds uh, items that are contained uh, in my personal cloud for me readily. Um, we've got a notification bell here. So if any time that there's a systemic notification, it will pop up here so that I can see um, you know, that we've I've either got an issue, an error, or something else that's alerting me to. Um, let's click on uh, here. I've got contacts. I've got Dan Calloway, which is myself, and I've got Jane Doe set up already. And I can search contacts. So if I had tons of contacts in here, I could search those as well. And let's see, if I go over here, I've got under my uh, profile, I've got settings, apps, users, about, help, and logout. Let me go ahead and click on the Settings button. And under Settings, I've got my name, my phone number, my email, the language, website, other things. I've got under Security, I've got, uh, I can set up a password, my, put in my current password and change it here if I want by clicking the Change Password button. I can even set up two-factor authentication if I want to, to make this a much more secure system. Uh, I may do that at some point. Uh, devices and sessions, I can add devices to the system here so that they're recognized and they become trusted domains within the personal cloud. So if I get on my laptop, for instance, and uh, upload a file from my laptop to here, uh, you know, then it's going to be secure and, and, and that kind of thing. All right, so for activity, it shows me uh, the activities that I can set up. Choose from which activities you want to get an email notification. Well, obviously, I don't want to get an email every time anything happens in the system. But I do want to get an email here if a file or folder has been shared because uh, I want to know I did it, not somebody else. So if somebody else is getting in here and sharing something, I want to get an email that lets me know that. Um, other than that, I have just get a stream that comes across if I'm sitting in front of the console here. Um, so list your own actions in the stream and notify about your own actions via email. If I check that box and anything I do, I get an e email notification, which obviously I do not want. Um, send emails. I'm going to do that hourly. I can change that to daily, weekly, as soon as possible. Okay. Uh, so if something does happen here, for instance, if somebody does share or another user shares a file or folder, I want to be notified about that share. Uh, within the hour, I'm going to get an email to my Dan Calloway at pm.me uh, address that tells me that that happened. Mobile and desktop, if I click on that, I can get these apps from the App Store. I've already downloaded one from the App Store for my iPhone. Um, if you've got an Android, you can get it from Google Play, and then there's desktop apps as well. And so I can go on my uh, laptop and download the desktop app. But what I'm doing on the desktop is I'm, I'm just uh, basically going up on uh, the browser and putting in the same address, the fully qualified domain name address, which is the non-secure, obviously, but nc.landlocal.asyscom.com, and it's pulling this up just fine. I'm able to log in to the system through the administrative login and access it so I can do it remotely. Uh, for administration here, um, I'm on that now for overview. Uh, I can get a complete overview, checking for system and security issues if there are any that will come up here. Uh, it does say that I have uh, a warning here regarding my SQL. I'll take a look at that later. Uh, the version of Nextcloud that I'm running is 17.0.0. Um, this is a update channel stable and uh, notify members of the following groups of any available updates. I'm in, an, I'm in the admin group, so I will be notified when that happens. 
for basic settings here, uh, you can do background jobs. The last job I ran was a second ago. And then for optimal performance, it's important to configure background jobs correctly. I'm using Ajax as the, uh, the method. I could use cron because cron is a part of Ubuntu. Or webcron if I wanted to register a cron service online. Um, but Ajax is good because it executes one task on each page loaded. All right, and uh, you can set up an email server here if I want to do that locally. And I, I do have a mail service set up on uh, Nextcloud. I'm not using it, obviously, but I do have it set up. So at some point, I may test it. But once you get your mail set up, you can then test a, an email settings here by clicking on the send email. And if you get an email sent out uh, successfully, then you know everything is set up properly. Uh, under Nextcloud announcements here, uh, shows the latest news of Nextcloud in your notifications, and that's in the admins group. Under support, um, you can get support through the forums or through GitHub or through chat. Uh, there's an IRC channel uh, called Nextcloud for Freenode. Now, I do use uh, IRC, and I have one set up for my Linux Unix tech channel, one set up for Windows 10 tech. Uh, one set up for Python coders, and so I, I probably will at some point go ahead and get up on Freenode and connect to Nextcloud so that I can get support there. IRC is a great way, by the way, if you've never used uh, Internet Relay Chat, uh, or if you don't know what IRC is, it's a great platform uh, to get pretty much instant support from people who are knowledgeable. Forums are great, you know, and, but you have to wait for answers from those. Uh, GitHub, I've never used it for support, but I'm, I'm assuming you can get fairly good support from GitHub from developers and other folks that are very knowledgeable. However, I've never used that either for support uh, features. Uh, but IRC, if you're familiar with ICQ, you may be familiar with that. Uh, it's kind of like the Internet uh, ham radio operator, you know, which CQ is a term in, used in ham radio, which basically means seek you, S-E-E-K-Y-O-U. It's exactly what it stands for. And so when people call out on ham radio, they say CQ, CQ, you know, and whatever, and they can give their call sign. Well, ICQ is an Internet ham radio, basically. And that's the way I look at IRC. You know, it's a chat session you get in, you chat to the people. Uh, you have to have a nickname to get in. I'm getting off topic right now, but um, I love it. Okay, so sub subscription key. You can put in your subscription key here if you have one for uh, community support service. And then you can generate a system report as well. I've done one of those already. Uh, I'm not going to do one now because it does take a while to generate. But you can also get up-to-date information from either Facebook or Twitter. Uh, you know, check out the Nextcloud blog, or you can uh, subscribe to their newsletter as well. All right, for sharing, um, I'm going to click the Sharing tab here, and you can see that you, you have various options here for sharing. You can allow apps to use the Share API. You can allow users to share via a link, allowing public uploads, or allow at, at, always ask, rather, for password. Uh, you can check this box to enforce password protection. In other words, a password is required. If you don't put it in, you're not going to get anything for sharing. Set default expiration date on a share if you want to do that. Uh, allow resharing and allow sharing with groups. Uh, you can do that as well. And then there's federated cloud sharing. Not too sure I know what that's all about. Trusted servers. Uh, you can set that up. You can share by email. There's a security link that you can click on here. So you can set up two-factor authentication or server-side encryption. There's a brute force white IP whitelist so that you, uh, in the whitelist right now, I've got 192.168.1.248.24. That means the whitelist ranges the brute force protection to specify which IP addresses are allowed in, okay? And so you can put those in. This happens to be my Windows 10 Pro platform. Um, you can add a new whitelist if you want. You can set up your password policy. You can set up the rules, basically, on what passwords can uh, how they should look, uh, what's the minimum structure of those. And then you can set up the OAuth 2.0 clients if you want. Here's where I set up the theming. And so under theming, I just set it up that way. Uh, 
you know, and, and I'm not going to get into that. Groupware, uh, you have a calendar service here, so automatically generate a birthday calendar, send invitations to attendees, send notifications for events, activity, tag management. I haven't gotten into tag management yet. Usage survey and logging. I haven't gotten into logging either, uh, but under logging, I'm assuming you have, yeah, you've got a lot of uh, various things that you can set up. It looks like I got quite a few errors. I'm not sure what's going on there, but uh, we'll take a look at that later. Um, and then, so here, let me get under apps and take a look at apps. Let's go out and take a look at that. And so here are my apps. Here are all the apps that I have available, and they're on the left-hand side as well. So under office and text, for instance, I can set up contacts. I did, I did set up the mail. Uh, if it's got disabled here, it means that it's enabled already. I've got a PDF viewer. I've got uh, text set up for uh, document editing, calendar, um, you know, deck, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, so I've got a markdown editor. I don't have that set up yet, so that's got download and enable. A mind map, uh, I can set that up as well. Let's go, see, let's see if I can do that. Let's do the download and enable that for mind map. It should show up uh, at the top of the screen when it is set up. Um, let's see, mail, contacts, files. It probably hasn't been enabled yet. Uh, let's click on it. Okay, that's the markdown editor. It's the wrong one. Looks like mind map is there, but I'm not quite sure where it is. Um, let's see if I can find it in the list here. Usually it p comes up over here because that's where my mail came up. If I can't find it, I'm not going to worry about it. Um, but it did it did appear to install it. I just need to find it. That's okay. All right, so let's, uh, let's keep going. Uh, users. Click on users here. And um, I can set up other users here by clicking on new user. If I want to to uh, set up another user, I can do that. So I can do, for instance, um, uh, let's think of somebody I can set up. Um, let's see, Sam Donaldson. Let's do S. Donaldson. Display name, Sam Donaldson. Password, just password. Email, let's leave that blank. Add user to the group, admin. I'll just select admin group. I can select another group if I want, uh, other than admin, obviously. Don't want everybody in the admin group. Uh, let's give him uh, unlimited, and let's go ahead and click check mark and save. Okay. Uh, all right, so Sam Donaldson should be set up. And an error occurred during unable to proceed. The password, oh, it's a too weak of a password. Let me give him a stronger password. Okay, and let's update that, and then let's check it. Please fill out this field. I thought I'd already... Okay, all right, so S. Donaldson, Sam Donaldson is now set up. So I've got another user set up here. I'm learning this too as I go, guys, so I apologize. It looks like I don't know what I'm doing, because uh, I don't. Um, all right, so users, um, you know, I click on that, and uh, you can add groups here. And so if I wanted to add another group, let's say if I wanted to create a marketing group, I can do that, and so I now have no users in that group, but if I go back to the uh, new user, uh, that's under that group. I don't want to do that, so this is everybody, and let's say if I want to change Sam Donaldson away from admin and add him to marketing, I can do that, or add him to both groups. I can do that as well, but I'll take it away, so he's going to be part of marketing now. All right, so he's in the marketing group. So under marketing group now, I have one user, and that's the S. Donaldson. Okay, that's how that works. Um, under about, you've got information here about. Um, we saw that on the intro when we first started. And let's see what else we got here. We've got help. So we've got a help feature set up. If I click on that, we can get help about the application um, and I probably need to go through this and read through this to learn it myself. I'm new to Nextcloud as well. I, I said I like it, and I do. I, I haven't used it very much. Uh, I have only begun using it. 
And so, uh, but I did want to do a review on it so others can see, uh, you know, the power of this thing. Um, mail, uh, if I click on the mail interface, you know, I can connect to my mail account here and do all kinds of things there. I haven't set that up yet, um, so I will need to configure that, and I don't want to take up video time to do that today. All right, so this has been uh, NextCloud 17.0.0. Um, .0. I'm going to go ahead and log out of it. Hope you enjoyed the video. If you haven't subscribed to me, go ahead and subscribe, please. Um, hit that bell when you do. And if you like the video, go ahead and hit a thumbs up. And have a nice day and take care, and we'll see you around the web.